Hi, in this video I want to warn artists that P064 is fugitive. I'll also talk about lightfast testing and misleading labeling practices. P064 is the orange pigment in Rembrandt's Brilliant Orange, Schmuenka's Saturn Red, White Knight's Orange and Peach, as well as Roman Schmal's Deep Orange. Several companies said that the rating originated from a trusted pigment powder supplier, but I'm most disappointed that none of these paint brands seem to have properly lightfast tested this pigment themselves before passing on third-party misinformation. This is false advertising that hurts individual artists. Not only does it result in artwork fading that was sold or carefully labored over for a long-term display, but we also spend more money for highly rated, supposedly pro-grade supplies. These paints should not end up fading worse than bargain paints that cost a small fraction of the price. Sadly, quite a few paints out there are falsely advertised as lightfast. While I'm on the topic of orange paints that unexpectedly fade, be aware that Winsor & Newton's Cadmium Free Orange is definitely not a good alternative to PO64. They marketed it as a less toxic cadmium alternative that was supposedly just as lightfast. But they refused to share which pigments were in it. Well, it turns out it contains a fugitive red pigment that completely fades away, leaving behind only the yellow in a multi-pigment mixture. Most of their other orange options are acceptable. In a minute, I'll paint a butterfly using one of my favorite single pigment orange paints called Transparent Orange which, like other forms of DPP, including PO71 and 73, has some very minor fading over time when diluted. Subtle dulling or hue shifts are hard to avoid in non-cadmium reds and oranges, since the warm end of the color spectrum absorbs more UV light and generally fades worse than pigments of other colors. These issues tend to be minor and still considered lightfast, falling somewhere between 6 to 7 on a blue wool scale or ASTM LF2 equivalent. PO64 is a modern pigment not sold as watercolor until 2017. Its unique chemical formula is fluorescent, which subtly refracts orange under a black light, a trait that often coincides with a lack of light fastness. There's very little info about its long-term performance as an art material. That's something to keep in mind if your work requires you to be concerned with light vastness, but you like to try new, rare, or exclusive pigments in paint catalogs. Your art could be where problems begin to be documented. Even pigments that have been around a while sometimes vary between brands. Independent artist testing often finds unexpected brand-specific problems because companies can just look up a rating from ASTM, a huge testing standards organization, regarding previously completed tests to simply copy the results under their paint label. There's no rule to prevent a brand from copying test results done 30 years ago regarding the pigment code they're using, even if that tested pigment sample was made by a completely different manufacturer. Also, on the subject of labeling, unless it's a toxic chemical flagged for a special import, paint brands aren't even required to fully disclose pigment ingredients. This helps companies protect trade secrets, but also means there's nothing to keep them from further misrepresenting their products. Just like the problem I've seen in PR177 and popular mixtures made with that red like Moonglow, PO64 also fades the most dramatically when diluted. This means any color you mix with PO64 will likely be even more fugitive than Moonglow. This video shows lightfast test results from 9 months, where the watered-down PO64 has completely disappeared off the page as if it was never painted. Normally, a color rated as Blue Wool 7 or 8 would show very little to no signs of fading at this time. Even the mass tone is showing some damage, but the most pigmented thick layer from White Nights seems to be the least affected. Everything I'm seeing indicates that PO64 was rated in mass tone and not properly diluted. Some pigment suppliers and the paint makers who buy from them do not seem to follow ASTM standards for rating pigments at their most vulnerable. 
Acrylic should be mixed with white to achieve pale tints, and watercolors are diluted down to pale washes with water. ASTM gives ratings based on the worst performance when diluted, not a pigment strength in mass tone. I know golden acrylics and core watercolors are tested this way, but I'll have to inquire with Rembrandt regarding that questionable LF2 rating note. It seems like an error, as I don't see how you could test PO64 diluted and not see a problem in just a few weeks, especially if they're using a rooftop or skyward facing box that receives more daylight hours than my vertical window. Even one directional sunrise or sunset tests show dramatic levels of fading in just a few months. Unfortunately, pigment powder companies around the world can decide to light fast test colorants however they see fit. They could use a xenon light machine that simulates outdoor light and is not as intense as tests behind window glass like ASTM performs in Arizona. Companies can also decide to test different materials than fine art paints. They make color plastic for appliances or housewares, printed signs, or automotive coatings, which may not best represent the pigment performance in artist paints, yet that rating may end up on a tube of watercolor. The most common light fast rating test used worldwide is called the blue wool scale. For this test, a panel of eight different dyed cloth strips is placed under direct sunlight near the other colors you're testing. The time at which each blue strip starts to fade is how you assign a number rating. Each one of these blue dyes is more UV stable than the next. The bottom of the scale, blue wool one, is the most fugitive dye strip, which starts to fade within hours to days. If a color you're testing nearby faded just as quickly as BW1, that's its rating. As the number gets higher, the dyes used are more light fast and take longer to fade. Blue wool stripes 6, 7, and 8 are generally considered light fast for professional art use. This was created by the textile industry to measure how fast clothing dyes would fade. While simple, it's not a foolproof test. It can be error prone when discerning the dark blue mass tone fading in relation to the fading of lighter value colors. The test can be completed too quickly to detect long term fading issues, especially if a pigment fades at a different rate than the blue wool dyes. Colors can also break down more severely in different testing environments, such as the presence of humidity or air pollution. The test duration is complete when the most durable light fast stripes start to fade. The amount of UV that this takes is roughly equivalent to 100 years of museum lighting, which is why that time frame is sometimes mentioned in paint catalogs. Because the dye panel fades based on the amount of UV light it absorbs, it's not a time duration test. Fading varies by season, UV intensity, heat, and humidity in your area. This test can be completed in as short as 3 to 4 months in the summer, but tests can take 9 to 12 in lower UV index northern climates or winter months. Home tests in vertical windows take longer than sky facing or angled box tests. The amount of hours you get in direct light is less per day, and too many rainy days also affect this time. If you're testing at home without a blue wool reference panel, know that LifeS colors can typically be exposed to over a year of direct sunlight without notable color change. A full year is a good time duration goal if testing colors with different start dates. That way they all receive different seasons of UV strength for a fair comparison. Many colors don't initially appear to fade in under six months, but can drastically fade at different rates over the next six. If you see something start to fade in just a few months, it's probably really fugitive. P064 started showing signs of fading within four weeks, right around the same time as my blue wool number three to four strips were fading. ASTM evaluates blue wool in a grayscale and assigns numbers in the opposite numerical order as Roman numerals one through five, one being the most light fast, five being fugitive. 
If you're not interested in doing light fast testing yourself, but you want to feel confident in your paints, the easiest solution is to stick with the tried and true basics. There are a lot of reliable pigments that have been around for long enough that artists have thoroughly tested them for you. There's no need to feel limited either. There's plenty of options. You can even replicate unique looking mixtures like Daniel Smith's Moon Glow and Primatech colors if you're willing to do some color mixing. There's some great resources online for setting up a light fast palette, starting with primary mixing basics. Handprint's website has a top 40 pigment list. The Color of Art pigment database allows you to check any pigment code number for problems or fading notes. And I pretty regularly add web pages to kimcrick.com where I share my experiences with each paint brand. I list my light fast recommendations and fugitive colors to avoid. I've made some mistakes using fugitive paint and had some art that faded indoors over time. I've dabbled in acrylics thinking they'd be more light fast, but fugitive pigments will fade in any medium. If you happen to find an acrylic paint made with PO64, know that if you mix it in tints, matte medium, or get a thin product like acrylic ink or airbrush paint, it can fade just like watercolor. I've gifted portraits to family members who hung them in rooms with lots of natural light and been surprised at how increasingly pale they looked over the next few holiday trips. Indoor art can fade, especially if the house is near the equator, waterfront, or has big windows. I've also ruined some art trying to fix mistakes with UV sealers that changed the appearance of my work. I had quite the catastrophe with Krylon's UV spray that not only failed in preventing fading, but also made the colors change unexpectedly. After a while, I decided to just focus on narrowing down my favorite, most versatile life as colors. I'll be making more videos about my favorite colors and mixing ideas in between sharing news about light fast test results. I hope the more we talk about issues like this on social media, the more commonplace it will become to verify what companies are telling us and help warn fellow artists of problems. We'll keep adding flagged colors to our collective knowledge pool, even if paint companies or even testing organizations like ASDM take years to fix things on their end. I'd love to see a light fast rating change for PO64 in the future, but I'm not sure if any of these companies will get right on this. I also hope to see more paint brands share images on their websites about their light fast testing practices. It would be nice if Schmeiko would post some images from diluted pale washes after UV exposure on their LightFast page of their website. It's important to know if they are even trying to be up to the standards of ASTM and Golden, since testing thick, full-strength swatches is essentially cheating on a test. Regardless of how much value you place on the longevity of your art materials, I think we can all agree that false advertising is a bad thing. I'm pretty sad every time a color that was sold to me as light fast turns out not to be. Artists invest their time, effort, and money into projects that are important to them, all the while making paint companies who misinformed them more wealthy. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent light fast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.